Hey everybody, it's me, Jimmy V, coming at you from the Dummy Blog Studio here in Orlando, Florida. That's the dummyblog.com for those of you who are new. Today I am repping the Vent Haven Museum. You can check them out at venthaven.org and you can make a tax-free donation on their website. It's the only website and the only museum dedicated to the art of ventriloquism. Okay, maybe there's other websites dedicated to the art of ventriloquism, but it's surely the only museum in the world dedicated to the art of uh, ventriloquism. They have over a thousand uh, dummies there in the collection and a whole lot more. New building has just been constructed and will be opening in the spring. So we're really excited for that. Super cool. All right, today I'm gonna to show you a ventriloquist figure uh, that is one that you I've not shown before. And I think when I got this figure, we didn't do an unboxing on it. Because I don't do an unboxing on every single dummy that comes through the door. Sometimes I don't have time to do the unboxing. They sit around for a while and I just be like, okay, I'm just going to open this up. So sometimes when I add figures to the collection, sometimes I'll add them because I really like the figure. Sometimes I'll add it because I really like the figure maker. And sometimes I'll add the puppet because I really like the ventriloquist who owned the figure at one time or another. And that is the situation with the ventriloquist figure that I'm gonna show you today. This figure was owned by a friend of mine that some of you, especially if you're in the magic circus or sideshow world might know the name, Doug Higley. Doug Higley has been the Phantom of the Midway since 1971. He was a master at making sideshow gaffes, uh, monsters, atomic fish, chupacabras, um, shrunken heads, monkey's paws, all these weird artifacts that could be displayed in some type of sideshow exhibit. He even created the single O, the single um, display grind show business model where you could set up a tent and show off one of these creations for a small fee. Uh, he was a brilliant guy. I loved him very much. And um, we became friends over the years. And um, at one point, uh, he had come to me and said, hey, I having some financial difficulty and I, I'm, you know, I was wondering if you wanted to buy some stuff. And I had bought a bunch of stuff from him and I, I was a customer of his. And I said, yeah, I, of course, you know, I love your stuff. And I said, but maybe there's a way we can, we can come up with something even better. So I cooked up this idea with him to run a advertising promotion for my car dealership clients. And so I had him make 42 of his Fiji type mermaid um, gaffes. And then I sent them to my clients. We stuffed them in the trunks of cars. We took pictures of them. We created radio and television commercials. And we ran the stuff all over in every major market in the United States. Talking about how we found a trunk monster in the trunk of a traded in car and that you should come down and check it out. Let us check your trunk to make sure you don't have any trunk monsters. And in the meantime, you can really get a great deal on a car. It was a lot of fun. It was during Halloween. It was spooky. It was kooky. It got tons of uh, traffic, media attention, and sold a whole bunch of cars. Not only that, Doug sold more Fiji Mermaid gaffs, zibits as he called them, in two month period of time than he probably sold in 10 years. So it was awesome. He made money. My clients had a great time and made money and it was a big, it was a big success. That's a cool story, but it gets even cooler because Doug's biggest honor and greatest desire was to be featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not cartoons. He submitted this promotion that he did to Ripley's and it they picked it up and wrote a cartoon about him and the promotion. And it ran in their syndicated newspaper column all over. It even got published in one of their books, hardcover books. This one, Ripley's Believe It or Not, Strikingly True, on page 220, right here, 220. You can see a whole page about Doug's zibits and his sideshow gaffes and the promotion. It's all described right here. And then they even 
displayed one of their his sideshow gaffs, one of his Fiji mermaids, in the lobby of the Ripley's Believe It or Not in St. Augustine. Or no, in Hollywood. In Hollywood. So, I mean, what better uh, accomplishment if your desire is to get into Ripley's than what he achieved? It was his greatest honor. I'm so excited to have helped him with that. Um, but Doug was also into ventriloquism. He was also into dark rides. He was also he was into all, magic. Um, but he had asked me at one point to help him find a maker to make a custom figure for him. And so I, I helped him. And he chose to work with Dan Pays. And Dan Pays made him a custom figure. And I have that figure right here. I'm going to show it to you right now. This little guy is Cody. Hey! Oh, let me see if I can get his mouth to work. Oh, there we go. Hey, everyone! How you doing? I'm Cody! Yeehaw! Can you all see? Yeehaw! He's got side-to-side um, -side moving eyes. He's got these really big cartoony eyes. And he's got moving mouth. And this is a classic Dan Pays dummy. I would consider a Dan Pays dummy a, you know, beginner to intermediate figure. Um, he has uh, this, he always, Dan always uses a skin texture that looks good from far away and a little rough up close, but you can see there, you can see his eyes. The hands have not a ton of detail. But overall, and on stage, this character really pops. And Doug loved this little guy. He, um, he didn't actually perform out in shows at all. Um, especially at the time when he got him, he wasn't in the best of health. But he did play with it at home. He, he worked with the puppet. He really grew fond of this puppet, and it was it was his it was his main character. In um, like June of 2020, he reached out to me, told me his health was getting worse, and that he couldn't use the figure, and was wondering if I would like it here at the Dummy Blog Studio. And of course, how could I pass that up? So I purchased little Cody here from Doug and I received him into the collection. And he's been here ever since, having a good old time, making all the rest of the dummies in the room smile. Yeehaw! Now, it, sadly, in April of this year, Doug passed away, but his memory lives on here at the dummyblog.com studio and in the minds and hearts of all those who use his sideshow gaffes to this day. So, I hope that was story was enjoyable for you guys. Um, I like to share stories about the vents, the vent figure makers, uh, the puppets, the history, as much as I can with you guys. It's me, Jimmy V, coming at you live from the dummyblog.com studios here in Orlando, Florida. That's a mouthful. And until next time, you guys, stay classy.